Do invisibility cloaks break the speed of light? Let's first consider what an invisibility cloak is. So at the center is some strange object that somehow I want to make invisible. So what I will do is wrap that inside of some magical material that will somehow bend and warp and do whatever it needs to do to the waves to render it invisible. Now, how do we know that it's invisible? Well, look at the waves coming in, nice and flat and smooth. And those same waves coming out are nice and flat and smooth. So unless the waves passing through are perturbed or delayed or modulated, so the amplitude changes, or there's something different about those waves leaving on the other side, there's no way to know that that wave has passed through an object. Now, of course, this requires that whatever's inside that invisibility cloak, it requires that it manipulates the wave in the right way. But the whole idea of an invisibility cloak is nice flat wave coming in, nice flat wave coming out. Let's draw some white lines that essentially trace the rays of the light as it passes through the invisibility cloak. So the light on the outside really just propagates along straight lines. However, the light on the inside has to curve around the object and come around kind of to where it came back in again, and then it exits. But let's think about what this means. Observe that the light closest to the center of the cloak travels a farther distance than the light outside of the cloak. That's because the light on the inside has to travel this extra distance around the curve. On the outside, it just travels in a straight line. Well, think about what that means. In order for those wave fronts to come out flat, that means that the light at the center of the cloak that travels this longer distance actually has to travel faster than the speed of light in order for it to exit the cloak, synchronized with that same piece of the wave over here that just traveled in a straight line. So it seems then fundamental in order to have an invisibility cloak that the wave has to exceed the speed of light. Does that bother you? Well, there's more to the story. The magical answer here is that there's a very big difference between the velocity that energy travels and the velocity that phase travels. And they're defined differently and we talk about them differently. Energy velocity and phase velocity, they are different things. They can be at different speeds and even in different directions. A wonderful example uh, from a recent breakthrough from the EM lab at the University of Texas at El Paso and collaborators at the University of Central Florida. Recently, they demonstrated something called a refractionless lens. So here's a lattice that does something magical with the waves. And in this lattice is a Fresnel lens, and it's really just a lens. Now watch the wave as it passes through that lens. On the other side, the wave front becomes curved, so it's definitely affected the phase of the wave, but notice that wave is not refracting. It's not converging. It is not focusing on the other side of the lens. That's because this lattice has turned off refraction. So energy still travels in a straight line, even though phase apparent by these, these wave fronts here is at some angle. It's only when that wave leaves the lattice that ordinary physics takes over and this curved wave front then focuses down and then eventually diverges. So this was actually experimentally demonstrated. And I think it's a great example of energy velocity and phase velocity doing two different things at the same time. So let's just think now we have an ordinary wave and I've drawn these white lines indicating the paths that the light is traveling along. So these wave fronts, these ripples of the wave are showing us what phase is doing. But what about the energy? So let's color this wave front to convey what energy is doing. And so in the vacuum of space, phase and energy velocities, they're in the same direction, they have the same magnitude, they're doing the same thing. And in fact, 
since we like to simplify things in our electromagnetic classes, we get trained in school to think that energy and phase are always in the same direction. And when they're not, it really seems magical. But in fact, it happens all the time. So here, the phase being conveyed by the wave fronts, this is flat, and energy is also traveling at the same speed as the phase. Now let's look at phase and energy through the cloak. So the wave front comes in flat and it has to leave flat. Now that we understand there's the difference between phase and energy velocity, in order for those wave fronts to exit the cloak being flat, the only requirement is that the phase velocity exceeds the speed of light, not the energy velocity. And in fact, we can see that the energy velocity truly is delayed here from the colors of the wave front. And if it seems magical that phase velocity can exceed the speed of light, the phase velocity is not actual stuff. The energy velocity is actual stuff. Phase is sort of this abstract mathematically defined point. And in fact, in electromagnetics, it exceeds the speed of light all the time. The phase velocity of modes in a metallic rectangular waveguide, for example, routinely exceed the speed of light. However, the energy velocity of those modes certainly does not. So when you look at a visibility cloaks in the future, think of this picture rather than looking at the monochromatic wave fronts that seems like something magical is happening. The phase velocity inside the cloak definitely has to exceed the speed of light in order to get flat wave fronts on the other side of the cloak. But the energy velocity for sure is not traveling faster than the speed of light and that the signals do get delayed going through the cloak. This suggests maybe one way of defeating a cloak. What if you illuminate it with some kind of transient pulse or put information on your wave and you can track the delay of that information? Thank you very much for listening to this. If you like this way of visual learning, check out all of the different courses on computation and electromagnetics that we have at eimpossible.net. It's going to help me a lot if you click like and even more if you subscribe to my channel.